How's it going everybody? It's Kevin here once again. Today we're doing a different kind of video. We're doing an interview video with another news connoisseur as well, Sean W. Why don't you say hello? What up, what up? You guys don't know Sean W, which I'm sure many of you do, but um, you know, there's always some people out there who are just, you know, don't, you don't get a chance to see everyone on YouTube, right? Exactly. Sean W is also another Halo YouTube content creator, focused on the news, very similar as we do here. If you basically, if you followed him and followed me, you would know literally everything literally that there is need, need to know about Halo. Literally everything. And literally everything. <laughs> <laughs> and so in this video, we're going to go into talking about a little bit of his content, what he's been brought to the Halo community. Maybe some tips on you, how to get your channel growing as well. Maybe a roadmap of Halo Infinite looking forward to in 2021. And then some rapid fire questions at the end here. So before we go any further, Sean, how did you get yourself into you know doing the in the Halo content? Like, what brought you to do so interested in doing Halo content on YouTube? Bro, I love Halo. So I've been into <laughs> Halo since Combat Evolved. So like, I did kind of think you know I I decided earlier this year I wanted to get into YouTube and I wanted to do something gaming. And it honestly didn't take that long to figure out. Like, okay, do Halo. There's a new Halo coming out, you know, for the first time in five years. So dude, it had to be Halo content, all right? Sorry guys, I dropped something, so I had to restart here. But yeah, <laughs> earlier this year when I decided I wanted to do YouTube, you know, I knew I wanted to do a gaming YouTube. And, um, you know, it was like, okay, there's a new Halo game coming out. I've been a Halo fan since Combat Evolved. It truly is one of my top five favorite franchises. Probably my overall favorite franchise um can't even list the other ones right now but halo has always been one of my favorites kevin so pretty easy choice to just focus on halo especially when there's a new one coming out it's been five years and they're saying they're gonna fix all the issues from like halo 5 essentially you know they've said that mm -hmm. a lot in interviews so it's like oh my god this not only is a new halo game coming it might be one of the best Halo games ever, if not the best Halo game ever made. It's definitely setting itself up to be like that, just because I feel like 343 is really taking in a lot of community feedback this time around when it comes to making their Halo game. And they want, really want to try to blend both the new and old styles of Halo. They kind of just recapture that Halo feeling that's kind of been missing really kind of since probably Halo 4, maybe even Halo Reach since then. Yeah. I agree with it missing since Reach. Mm. I agree. You mentioned about the long time between Halo games. Uh, you were kind of one of the main people I saw on YouTube who kind of pushed the end the content drought situation. Because pretty much since uh, the announcement of the delay in like mid-August to about what October, we really didn't hear anything like at all from Halo Infinite. And we had to really like do some deep dive searching to kind of find some stuff to talk about. Like we're look, we were looking into toys. We were looking into cookies, <laughs> the cookies you know, look, looking in terms of service agreements <laughs> i went to at yeah. least like 10 different gas stations looking for the cookies and you know, when you did find it you actually you know, were able you got the code you typed it in and you showcased oh, no. that the uh, the armor coatings were costing five dollars and yeah. so you kind of that kind of sparked a bit of a controversy there like i even saw like some major gaming content creators out there like i think even angry joe like retweeted your tweet as well like that tweet freaking blew up and it really kind of started a whole new discussion to even that really force the hand of 343 to get out there and you know talk about some parts of halo infinite so i wanted to kind of go into like what was yeah. your how did that whole process go around for you there uh it was bizarre dude um you know like i said i was out just like looking for the cookies like i really just wanted to find the cookies and part of the drive for it was because you know, I was trying to do like a lot of Halo news like you were and still are, you know, we both still are. So I was just like looking for content basically. So I got the mm -hmm. cookies, I found the cookies and I was so excited. It was like, oh my God, like it was like the scavenger hunt. I finally found them, you know, and then I put the code in <laughs> and then uh, like I got the email back and it was, it was like, whoa, like, you know, oh, this is content. Like I should, there's nothing else. There's nothing else to talk about really, you know? So I, I felt like I should like document the process. So I just took a screenshot of the email they sent me. And I thought it was like newsworthy basically that it says valued at five. So are the armor mm -hmm. coatings actually gonna be five? At this point, it seems like it, you know, like it's that that thing, that tweet blew up. We've had a lot of uh, talk about armor coatings. I feel like the 343 at this point would have said something like, no, they're not gonna be five. Like, no, nah, it's, it seems like it's gonna be five. So, you know, I put that out there and then lo and behold, the, the tweet just goes crazy. Uh, crazy, dude. Mm -hmm. I, I don't even know. It's like f half a million impressions or something like that on Twitter. And it was just awkward because like, um, 
I, I didn't really have a problem with it. Like, I don't really have a problem with the Halo Infinite microtransactions. Like, I, I understand it's a free-to-play game. $5 for a skin, you know, I, I don't really have a problem with it. You know, I've, I've bought Fortnite skins for like 10 bucks, 15 bucks. So, you know, I've exactly, spent money yeah. on that. I've spent money on Halo 5. And so I didn't, I, I didn't think the five was a big deal. And then I thought it was funny. I actually thought it was good value. I put that in the tweet because it was like, yeah. the cookies are like $2. You can actually find them for a dollar in some places. Um, so it was like, you get the cookie for $2, you get to keep the cookies and then you get the $5 skin. So I, I was just like playful in the tweet and then it blew up and it was just really awkward, honestly, because, uh, you know, eventually what happened with the tweet was not nothing like what my intention was when I posted it. But I left it up anyway. Uh, I did actually consider deleting it at one point. Um, but then I was like, why? You know, it doesn't make any sense. But the reactions mm -hmm. are crazy. It was just crazy. But, you know, yeah, dude, we definitely got content. <laughs> like, we can say that. <laughs> <That's> what... <laughs> it, it was it was huge. But, you know, and also yeah. the last thing I'll say on it, it's like if I didn't find it and, and post it, I'm sure somebody else would have, you know. I was just... I was just hunting for them. I was hunting for them. Yeah, I think that like, probably the biggest issue a lot of people have with it is just that color customization has been something with Halo that's been with it since really the beginning. And then now seeing that it's being charged for, you know, color customization, just a bit of a shock to the community. But they, I think a lot of people also don't see that we will be able to get color customization and armor coatings and armor in general in game for just playing as well and grinding out the content. So. Yeah, right. there's definitely going to be free ways to enjoy it. And I think that's one thing I think 343 is really going to be focusing on is uh, appreciating players' time. I think it's also kind of like the general trend in gaming as well, that as long as people, you get people to play your game, that's the most important thing about it. And then after that, live it up to you know a player's option if they want to pay for extra stuff. And so a very in unique thing about Sean here is that not only is he actually like a dedicated Halo player making Halo content as well, but he actually showcased on his channel that he actually plays Halo with one hand and it actually could probably stomp you. He stomps me when it comes to playing Halo. And he actually posted a couple of videos talking about it and how he's kind of overcome that uh, challenge right there. So I want to go maybe go in a little detail about like exactly how you go about playing Halo and Maybe like how that's kind of, you know, affected your gameplay style in certain ways. One of the main reasons that I love Halo so much is because, you know, I am an amputee and um, Halo, and I made a video on this, um, playing Halo like competitively uh, with one hand was definitely like a life-changing experience for me. So, you know, I got really into Combat Evolved, like I would play with um, kids on the street, you know, we just do split screen. And whatnot and that was the first time i could ever compete in something um <clears throat> with one hand and like i was actually better than people rather than always having to play catch up like playing halo in particular uh really helped to i guess kind of boost my confidence i would say uh and just show me that like if i work really hard at something uh i can overcome you know any limitations and whatnot so i played so much halo 2 man i remember the first time i played halo 2 online i played it at a friend's house and I had never played up until that point. I had only done like lands and split screen. So I go over his house and I remember it clearly. It was like midship, maybe team slayer or something. It was teams. And, you know, he's playing and I'm watching him. He's got his whole screen to himself and there's seven other players in the match. And it was just like, oh my God, this is like <laughs> the best thing I've ever seen in my life. Like I was so, I was like, I need Xbox Live. This is incredible. Because <laughs> up and until then, dude, we used to do lands all the time. You know, we get pizza. It would be like two people oh, yeah. on a screen, mm -hmm. sometimes four people on a screen. And you never got more mm -hmm. than like, at most I think we got is like six people, you know? So oh, yeah. seeing like seven other players and you just get your own screen. And then he showed me big team battle. I was like, Whoa, what? It's like 16 yeah. players. Like, what do you mean? Like, I, I need this. <laughs> So I, what do you mean? <laughs> 16 people. Oh my god, dude. So it was just incredible. I was like, I need to get Xbox Live. So once I got Xbox Live, like I just lived on Xbox Live. I played so much Halo 2 that I started to get really good at it. And then um, through like custom games and stuff like that, I got into MLG. And then um, I knew one of my friends at school, he was really good. So we got into MLG and then we found some two other dudes that were local. And we would go to local tournaments and we would win all of them. We won all the uh, local tournaments and then it was like, hey, we should go to an MLG event, you know? And uh, we flew down to North Carolina for Charlotte in 2007 and we placed top 48. And then we uh, came back up and then went to Meadowlands um, afterwards in 2007 and placed top 48. So 
It was like, oh, we were so close to like actually being pro players, but it was just an incredible experience. Um, and uh, it, it was just like life changing, I would say. And it definitely, again, it showed me, you know, even if you have limitations, you can still overcome them. So yeah, check check out my channel if you want to see that. But what I, was, what I was gonna say is the interesting thing is like I've been doing uh, Halo YouTube for like eight months, and I have done some stuff on like the one-handed gaming and whatnot, and it's gotten a decent amount of views. But like, uh, it, it really hasn't done anything. <laughs> I would say like for the channel, like it's not like it uh, has like really boosted um, the channel or anything. So I, which I just think is interesting. Maybe I need to make more videos on it or something. But you know what though, it might just be my personality. Like, uh, you know, I've made the videos on playing with one hand, but like if you know me like in real life, like my general preference is just treat me like everyone else. Like I don't want <laughs> special treatment. Um, I've never, I've never been like that. And like, I, I guess that's probably why I don't like push it as much. You know, I probably could, like mm. I could just honestly like stream or make a gameplay video and just pump that out, you know, every other day, but I don't. Maybe I should, I don't know. But it, again, it's just like, I try to just be myself on YouTube. And my true self is like, you know, I've just like adapted my life at this point to being an amputee. So it's just like, whatever. Like I go to play video games, whatever I play with one hand. I do a lot of other things, you know? And so it's not a big deal to me. And so, you know, uh, maybe that's why I don't make as much content on it. I don't know if it's like that big of a deal, you know? People have seen everything I mean, in 2021. Yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. Right. I mean, there's like one guy on Twitch who like plays with his mouth, you know, and like yeah. dominates people in PUBG, you know? Exactly. Flashback to 2007 uh, in MLG Charlotte in, in um, North Carolina. So I, w I was playing with my team and back then, like you would talk trash. Uh, you would just get up and oh, talk yeah. trash, you know, oh, but yeah. we were playing it was the first uh, round of the tournament and we were playing like a pretty decent team like they had some players that were kind of known and like I was just killing it So at one point my teammate taps me on the shoulder. He's like turn around. I was like what? And I turn around there was like, I don't know Maybe like 40 or 50 people huddled around watching and they were impressed that I was playing with one hand so like I won't lie, I was like, oh, oh, oh hey, hey, oh, we got some people watching me, you know. And I went off. I remember I went off on like uh, midship team slayer. I went like twenty and like ten or something like that. Like in a tournament, that was nice. So I was feeling mm. good. But then my teammate, oh my guy, he's, he's hilarious, hilarious dude. So at you know, I was just walking around watching other amateur things. Like we would all kind of split up after the rounds and just kind of do our own thing sometimes. So my teammate found me. He's like, here, you gotta, you gotta come with me. I was like, what, what? He's like, you gotta come with me. So he leads me over to the Rainbow Six side. I was like, why are we going to Rainbow Six? Like nobody cares about Rainbow <laughs> Six. Like why are we over here? And then he's leading me over to the station and, and there's a crowd like twice as big as what I had minimum, huge crowd, huge crowd. So we get up and it was a guy playing Rainbow Six with his face, just with his face. What? And it was like, what? I mean what? Like even I'm like I'm like I'm like what? You know? Like I'm playing with one hand and, and, and dominating in a tournament, and then I'm like, oh my god! And my teammate just puts his hand on my shoulder. He's just like, sorry. <laughs> oh, he, was just, he just said oh. sorry. I was like, oh, you jerk. <laughs> because it was like, yeah, dude, like this guy got to give it up. This guy's playing with his face, bro. Come on, come on. That, that is crazy. That is inc incredible. Oh, I just shook. I mean, yeah, but like, so but, that was can he double shot with his face though? I don't know what they do in Rainbow Six. Shot. <laughs> tap, tap, tap. Molly, I also kind of want to go into talking a little bit about your content and your growth on the channel, because I don't think I've seen anybody, especially in the Halo community, but most people on YouTube in general, I haven't seen your anybody who has much, much growth as you have in the past, what, eight months you've started the channel? Yeah, you've grown all the way up to 17K subs right now at this point. And that was just organic growth from just your content, uploading content that people want to watch and check out. Yeah. And so I kind of wanted to pick your brain a little bit about what kind of led you to doing the kind of content that you do and maybe what kind of suggestions you might have for other people who maybe want to get into doing YouTube as well. There's a lot to YouTube. There's a lot to YouTube. Uh, I don't know. I'll just give you what is coming off the top of my head. Uh, I think YouTube in a lot of ways is art. Uh, I do think there's like kind of universal strategies you can use on YouTube. Um, but overall, I think it, it kind of is art. Like you kind of just like make what you're, what you're going to make. Um, and then people are either going to like it or they're not, you know, it's, it, you can't mm. force people to watch your content. 
And I'm not so sure you can just like perfectly engineer content that like is guaranteed to work. Like if that was true, there would be like robots, like AIs that could just like start a channel and just, <laughs> you know, so there, there's definitely some kind of like magic uh, to it, you know, um, in terms of someone thinking about getting into YouTube, um, I don't know. I do think I got lucky in a lot of ways. Uh, I guess, so let me cir circle back for a second before I give advice to someone. Um, I'm trying to figure out because I just went off on it. Or maybe, right maybe think of like what led you to doing like this kind of content on YouTube rather than like yeah. gameplays or like cut commentaries and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I'll give a little advice to people, um, just general advice, but like what I, all I can tell you is just like my mindset that I put into the channel, maybe that is useful to people and, and maybe mm. that was responsible for growing the channel. Cause here's the interesting thing and it kind of scares me about YouTube. Uh, if I had to start over again from scratch, I have no idea how I would get to where I am now, right? So in other words, I don't actually know why I got to the 17,000 subs. <laughs> That's mm. just my honest answer. If I knew, <laughs> you know, I would replicate it and I would just keep growing. Like right now I'm in like a bit of a plateau. One thing I applied to YouTube is, you know, you should be aware what other people uh, in your space are doing, but you also need to resist like uh, looking too much at what other people are doing. At least I need to, um, mm. because that's how you remain original. Uh, whatever you feed your mind and input into your mind, you're going to get more of that, right? You know, so like I sell coffee, I have the Galactic Roasters, uh, shameless plug, right? But uh, what I do is I only at this, so when I started uh, and got into the coffee business, I spent about a year, literally a year going to trade shows, uh, going to cafes, ordering stuff off the internet. I've tried so much coffee. I tried a ton of coffee. <laughs> um, to the point, like I, I love coffee. But anyway, I sampled tons of coffees. So what I did was I, is I just did my research to understand the space, right? Now I don't taste any other coffee. I just taste mine. I don't need to taste other coffees because if I taste other coffees, you know, I might be like, ooh, maybe I should switch our roast, you know, or maybe we need, no, stay focused on what you have. You have a good thing, do that. So you, with YouTube, I do something similar, not as extreme though, whereas as, like, I won't watch anybody's YouTube content, but I try to <laughs> limit what I consume, all right? That way I can just focus on my stuff. And, and I think it's just kind of like the price you have to pay as being a content creator. Like I can definitely tell you, uh, it's probably more fun to just be a viewer and be able to watch all the channels you want to watch. You know, mm. uh, making content is, is quite draining. It, it takes a lot of effort, a lot of work. It's a, t it's a hell of a grind. And I do think part of it to maintain your originality, you kind of got to zone in on what you're doing. Like when I, I make my videos, I put them out and then I watch them like almost all day, my own stuff. Like it's almost like I don't always have time to watch other people's stuff. I just watch my stuff to just try and figure out how I can improve. Like if you had data on me as a viewer, you would see like I watch my stuff like tons of times. Like I'll put it on, I'll put my headphones on and then I'll just like do some other work and like I'm listening, I'm like, oh, that wasn't good or, or, or this should be better. And then that way I have a better read on it. Again, it's just part of being, uh, you know, a content creator in my opinion. You gotta be like a professional. But um, yeah, if, if maybe that's why the channel grew and I was able to keep my content like very original, but to circle back, I have no idea like why I grew, you know, I, I, I don't know. Mm. Like I've, I've spent on some videos, I've spent uh, literally on one video, a lore video, I spent about two months on it and it, it's one of my least viewed videos. And then some videos, like some news popped up, you know, and I'm like, oh, and like, I kind of just react to it, do like a quick analysis. You know, the video didn't take that long, maybe 45 minutes to an hour uh, between like making my notes and thinking about it and then making something that I thought was good. And then that just gets gets way more views. So there's no, there's, I don't know, it, that's why I think it's kind of like art. Um, and then the last thing I can say on YouTube, I think if you're getting into YouTube, uh, first of all, ask yourself, why are you getting into YouTube, right? Like if you're thinking this is gonna be a career for you, uh, I would say that is not a good idea. All right. I think you should treat mm. it as a hobby. Um, because again, listen to what I'm telling you, right? The question Kevin asked me, 
How did you grow fast this year? Now I'm telling you, if I had to start over, I don't even know what I would do. Like, I'm not even sure I can replicate it. So I'm telling you, it's not guaranteed at all. So treat it as a hobby. I think you should put the least amount of effort into it at first. Like it, you need to treat it as a hobby. I, I have this Yeti now. I started with, let me see if I still even have it in here. Uh, yeah, wow, I do. Uh, I started with this mic, bros. I started, I bought the cheapest mic I could essentially. Samson Go mic, these are like $40. <laughs> You know, I started with this. I, I, I used this for months before I upgraded to the Yeti. So I was like, I'm going to do YouTube, but I'm going to start with the least, uh, lowest equipment possible. I didn't even have a webcam. You know, I just did this and just some editing. So I would suggest you treat it as a hobby because again, it's art and it's just, you don't know what's going to happen. Um, I were, I'd made a video like what, once every like three to five days for months when I started, you know, some days, sometimes I would make some more, uh, but I, I didn't make that many videos um, because, you know, I, I treated it as a hobby. I just think you should treat it as a hobby. Anybody young who thinks like, oh, this is gonna be a career for me. I don't think you can do that until you, you hit like, I don't know, let's just say 10,000 subscribers. If you can hit 10,000 subscribers, then yeah, maybe you're gonna be able to push through. Um, but in terms of tips, my tip first is, you know, if you're asking for tips, Ask yourself, why are you asking for tips? And then two, why are you doing this? If you're just doing it for fun as a hobby, okay, have fun with it. But definitely um, treat it as a hobby. And then the last thing with that though, when I mean like, when I'm asking like, you know, ask yourself like, why do you want to do this? I think you should have a plan. Uh, I had a plan. It definitely helps to have a plan. That's so much more than just, you know, how to get views. It's like, there's a lot of just kind of a big brain thinking when it comes to if like, <laughs> what are you doing it? Why are you doing it? How to go about doing it? It's not just like upload this and you'll get this, you know, it's right. not like a one-to-one -one thing. Being able to be self-critical of yourself, understand who you are, what you can provide and something maybe unique or a different take on things that maybe you can do better than somebody else. <laughs> that's interesting that you said though, about like yeah. being self-critical, for example. And that's why I think it's almost like art. It's like, you have to learn to mm -hmm. like live with certain hypocrisies, uh, I would say. So you should um, take feedback and be self-critical, right? You should listen to your comments and somebody's like, you should do this different and whatnot. But then at the same time, if you take too much criticism in and you allow the feedback to drive you too much, that could cause you to conform and not stay original. That's the thing, yeah, you just, you gotta experiment, play around with it and what works, push that more. And what doesn't work, kind of push it to the side. Even if you like it, you, know, you might have to push it to the side a little bit more. I think you're right. And I think this moves into our next topic here. Moving forward, we got 2021. <laughs> this is the year that Halo Infinite is releasing. I swear it's happening this Let's year. Go. <laughs> <laughs> and so I wanted to kind of get, pick your brain about what you think the roadmap is going to be kind of looking like for Halo Infinite information throughout 2021. I think we'll get a little more than um, but. 2020 was like, now we got to get used to saying last year is the first. So last year, I think right. it'll, it'll, I think it'll mirror that. I mean, uh, sketchy even kind of used that language. He's talking about how they're going to restart the journey. So restarting to me sounds like, all right, we're going to just like copy paste what we did in 2020. So I would expect we're not going to get that much stuff. Honestly, <laughs> in my perfect world, give us like a few pieces of concept art, like, uh, you know, once a month, that would probably be great but it seems like they're just gonna stick to like these big like essays with a few pictures. So I don't see those being more than once every month or two. I don't think we're gonna mm. get monthly stuff though. Yeah, I, I'm kind of feeling that we're probably gonna get something maybe every three, maybe like some big update probably in between January and June. Cause I'm in June, that's where we have the E3 like event. And that we're going to be able to probably that's when the ball's really going to start get rolling because like, we'll definitely see some new content, more gameplay footage and things like that. But up until that point, I think it'd be kind of, you know, difficult to find any kind of information that we could really go off of. I have a feeling we'll get like one big update, probably maybe like March, April or something like that. Kind of like what we had with uh, back in December for the infinite update. But until then, maybe like little bits and pieces here and there. And if anything leaks out until then, maybe 343 will talk about it or showcase it kind of like with the armor coding system yeah uh but yeah i think we're probably going to be pretty quiet up until uh june when it comes to halo infinite stuff it almost feels like 
we only got the high level update because of like the end the content drought thing like i feel like yeah i, I feel like they weren't even going to do that almost like i feel like we all the community almost like made that happen and so it's like they they almost like barely even wanted to give us that the day of making this recording and talking about live service and halo infinite yes like okay would you did you kind of go into a little bit of that topic yeah, a little yeah. Bit? uh you know they did give some details on um the live service nature so we knew it was going to be a live service game they they hinted at that you know you know, free to play multiplayer is obviously going to be live service but one of the big questions in the community as i know you know is what like what in the world does someone get if they buy the game for 60 dollars? like what like how is campaign going to work is campaign going to be like a separate thing uh or you know what is it going to be but in this high level update they confirmed that you know the uh live service nature of the game is going to encompass everything so campaign and multiplayer will feature live service so you're going to unlock things by completing challenges and leveling up and, and then you get your rewards so it's not that it's just oh okay free to play multiplayer and then you just have about no it's the entire game is going to be live service and then essentially microtransactioned out you know there's going to be stuff in the in the campaign that you're going to have to you know do certain things to unlock it you know beat this mission unlock this so that's kind of the basis of my video is that uh it this is going to be a full-on live service the live service is not limited to multiplayer and then also i just said in there how um you know i think I think it's going to be awesome, though. You know, I think uh, we've never had a live service Halo game. I think it's going to be awesome and better than uh, Fortnite's live service, better than Valorant and, and Apex. The top shooters out right now, Fortnite, uh, Valorant, Apex, Call of Duty. What are, what's similar about all of them? They're free to play, but they're also live service. They give you something to do. It, it's fun. Mm -hmm. like, you know, it's fun to have this game where it's like, you know, there's constantly something, something to do. That's one of the things that's yeah it's probably missing from halo you know um i don't know like with fortnite i love the challenge system i haven't really played seriously since 2018 but i liked how you'd get the battle pass and challenges or no they would do like daily or weekly challenges i think it was, i think it might have been weekly challenges or whatever it was but it was fun it was like you gotta go in a battle royale match you gotta go from these three locations and that was fun because it was there's some challenge to it because you could just get picked off like it'd be kind of hard so it's just fun to like have stuff to do outside of just like playing the game you know things you can accomplish and then you get rewards for it i think it's fun and there's a reason that live service games are some of the most popular like you can hate it all you want but dude like there's a reason they're popular and part of it is because they're live service which means there's always something to do always something to work towards so it's fun next one well, let's, go, let's go into the rapid fire questions here i kind of i'm also doing this format with all future interviews as well okay obviously you get these same questions everyone asks these questions they want to know when it comes to halo content creators they want to know this all right here we best go. halo campaign combat evolved Oh, do I have to elaborate? Best on multiplayer. It? Oh, okay. Uh, Halo. But you can elaborate if you would like. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's rapid fire. It's supposed to go quick. Uh, best multiplayer. My personal favorite, Halo 2. Objectively, Halo 5. Ooh, objectively, Halo 5. Best multiplayer. Warzone was incredible. Uh, Halo 5 takes a ton of skill. Have you ever seen this bro, Frosty, play Halo 5? Jeez. Dude, yeah. Ugh. Frosty and Shotzi are just insane, dude. Bruh. They put that game to a whole new level. Bro, they changed I, the game. That that game takes so much skill, man. It takes way more skill, I think, than even Halo 2. And I was competing mm -hmm. in Halo 2. Best Halo game, period. Oh my god. Uh, okay, for me it's Halo 2 because I played it the most. I had I have the best experiences with it. Uh I don't know. I guess I guess Halo 3, man. You know, there's a lot I don't like about Halo 3. But, like, even people I know who don't even play Halo, but they've played Halo 3. Halo 3 did a lot for Halo, the franchise, and the popularity mm. of it. It was a good game, you know. I'd like Halo 2 more, but I think Halo 3 overall. What part of Halo Infinite are you most excited about? The Battle Royale, bro. The Battle Royale, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I would be very surprised if there is no Battle Royale in Halo Infinite. Or it's either a Battle Royale or whether you call it a Battle Royale or something very similar to it that I'll be able to argue that is a Battle Royale and I'll be able to defend myself, my prediction. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. All right, guys, so I think that kind of wraps up the interview, guys, with Sean W. here. Again, if you guys want to check him out, he's on YouTube, he's on Twitter, he's on Instagram, he's got his own coffee as well. 
Chan, why don't you? I'll give you the last uh, little bit. <laughs> Rest in peace, <laughs> Master Chief Cup. Chan, what, what do people got to look forward to on your channel and channels and content in general in 2021? More predictions. All right. Uh, anything that comes out, like Kevin, I'm on it. You know. So between him and me, you're gonna stay up on all the news. Definitely come to us for the news. You need us for the news, bro. I'm telling you. All right. Uh, more, yeah. So more predictions. I want to go deeper into the story. Uh, do a little more analysis. And I won't lie. I'm gonna try and put some more personal content into the channel because, uh, you know, fall 2021 probably means November, bro. So uh, yeah, it is gonna be 11 months. And I and like we've talked about, I don't think there's gonna be a ton of content. So there's always gonna be some Halo stuff on there and perhaps some content that you can learn from some more, uh, you know, of my personal experiences in life. And also guys, if you're if you're a coffee drinker, check out the links in the description down below too. Galactic Roasters, got a link right there. Got a link to all his social media and YouTube channels, all that kind of stuff, it's in the description. If go, please check it out. You will not regret it, I guarantee it. Get the Kevin Kulik's approval on that one. <laughs> Dude, Kevin, thanks so much for having me on, man. I've been excited to come on your channel. Ever since we did our uh, coffee catch-up on, that one did really well. People loved it. People had a blast. I love Kevin. We get along really great. So if you're not subbed to him and you're watching, if you've watched this far, uh, you better sub, yeah. bro. I mean, come on. What are you What are you doing? All right? <laughs> <laughs> but thanks again for having me on, man. I, you know, we, we'll just keep doing these indeed hey sean i appreciate taking the time i day to come by and chat so yeah everyone thank you so much for coming by the channel appreciate it check out sean's stuff in the comment description down below and uh, we'll catch you on the next one peace out